Let's take a look at joining a contrast yarn in on your pair of socks. Um, this is great if you want to use up scraps of sock yarn to make scrappy socks or if you wanted to make a pair of socks just with two colours so perhaps you'd have contrast cuffs, heels and toes. Now I've already done the cuff here. This is in West Yorkshire Spinners Candy Floss and I'm going to be making um, contrast cuffs, heels and toes on this particular pair of socks and this is the yarn that I'm going to use to go with it. This is West Yorkshire Spinners in Sherbet Fizz. And having made the cuff, this is the point where I want to bring in the next yarn so that I can continue the leg portion in a different colour. There are quite a few ways of joining yarns and I'm going to show you the way that I use. I've never had a problem with it coming undone. Um, I, I don't notice it in my, in my socks. There's nothing worse than thinking that you can feel a, a lumpy, yarny bit where, where there's been a join made. There are, there are no knots, which is most important, and um, you can always tighten it up as you go along as well so that if you notice that one of the stitches is looking a bit loose and you've still got the option to do something with it a bit later. I'll put that to one side. What I'm going to do is I always work from the centre of the ball. So I'm going to going to reach into the centre of the ball and pull pull the yarn out. Here we go. Now with this stripey yarn, you can see the stripes on the ball, the, the way that the way that they're going to come out. With this stripey yarn, when it's the beginning of the ball, I never start with the first colour because it's never obvious where it is in the ball that the, the colour has been cut. So I'm going to pull this purple section out and then the next colour is green and that's the one that I'm going to join in with and the rest of this purple I'll just cut it off later. So to join the yarn in you simply take the working yarn and just keep hold of it for now. We go into the stitch first and then with the new yarn we wrap it over to make the stitch and you've got the end here it's just hanging loose at the moment so you can hold on to it and you make the stitch with the new colour. Now this is the point where we need to weave the ends in. This is the method that I use. So I get hold of the two loose ends and I pull it up. And then I make the next stitch. And then the two loose ends, I pull them down. And that pulls them over the yarn that I'm working with. I'll make the stitch again. And this time I'm going to pull the yarn up and then make the stitch, pull the yarn down and make the stitch. And I'll do this for probably 10 stitches maybe, a, a good inch or so along my work as I'm going along and then that way I'm going to be very sure that it's not going to come back out again because if you can see it's held in very firmly by the stitches that I've actually knitted with. So this is the, now the new working yarn. This is the yarn that I don't want to use anymore and then when I'm ready I'll just cut these ends. If you wanted to you can cut them a little bit longer and then weave them back in to be quite sure that there's not going to be any risk of them coming apart but this is also the point where if you found that there was a little gap here where it was looser, you can just pull these ends and that'll tighten the stitches further down and then you've got a nice neat join. It won't come undone in the wash, it won't come undone with wear and also you won't really feel it in your sock at all. Particularly once your socks have been washed and worn a few times, it just flattens in to the fabric of the knitting and then it's absolutely fine. You can use this method of joining in for any type of sock really, although what I would say is that if it's a lace sock you might find that you can only join in for the first couple of stitches and then you might have to leave a long end and sew it in later so that you didn't see these these ends going across if you had lots of yarn overs. But you could still use this method if that's what you wanted to do if you weren't comfortable with using one of the other ones that's around. You can use this same method if you wanted to make scrappy socks. So, for example, if I wanted to add a different coloured stripe into this black sock, because let's be honest, black socks are not very exciting. So if I wanted to put a rainbow stripe in, this is some leftover West Yorkshire Spinners Rum Paradise. And I think the look, colours will look fantastic next to this black sock. So I would just do exactly the same thing. I would get to the point where I wanted to join it in and then just start knitting with the new colour. So... Here's the new colour I want to work with. 
keep that one out of the way for now and then here's the two ends that I don't want so the black end is is the one that I've finished with and then here's the end of, of the new yarn I'm going to pull them over the working yarn knit the stitch pull them down over the working yarn knit the stitch pull them up over the working yarn knit the stitch pull them down again and, and that's it you can do that same method for any point of the sock you can make as many stripes as you like and and, and you can see that it's it's always safely held in here's the new working yarn here's the end of that working yarn kept in tight and then here's the end of the previous working yarn and that's also kept in tight as well now I'm at the point where I want to change the yarn for the heel we have two choices here if if the yarn that you are using for your heel is the same color as the last stripe on your sock leg then in theory you can just leave this hanging and you can use this to pick up the second set of stitches on the gusset but if your last stripe is going to be different to your heel coloured yarn and you want to change it completely but still keep the stripes in order then you're going to need to cut this yarn otherwise you're going to end up with a, a strange single stripe that goes around your sock before you pick up the yarn again so that's what I'm going to show you how to do if, even though potentially as the as this pink is the same I, I could leave it but I'll show you how to cut it and then you'll know what to do if that's what you want to do with your sock as well so to start the heel flap the easiest thing to do is to keep this end of the circular needle out of the way because this is the end of the working yarn as it is at the moment and I want to be able to use that to be able to knit it in. Using my double pointed needle I'm going to knit the first two stitches because that's what stops us getting a hole here. So I take my contrast yarn and just like we did at the cuff I'm going to knit the first stitch and then I am going to take the yarn over the top Here's my new working yarn and I'm going to knit the second stitch. I'm going to take the yarn back over again. Now if you remember on the heel flap we're doing slip one, knit one. So I'm going to slip the stitch and then I'm going to knit it. I'm going to slip the stitch again and I'm going to pull the yarn back up over the top. I'm going to slip the stitch again yarn back over towards the bottom so this is just the same as what we did with the cuff it's just that you're having to accommodate the slip stitch and you might worry that it's not going to hold properly doing it this way because you've got that extra slip stitch but actually it, it holds pretty well and you can see along here you can just see you can see a bigger loop so you might choose to go a little bit further to make sure that you've got it all tucked in really nice and safely but you'll find that it will hold the yarn pretty well and you won't have a problem with it coming undone on the heel flap once you've completed the heel flap and the heel turn it's time to join in the colors again now you can see that we want to continue the sequence so we've gone from pink to purple and then so on here's the pink which we'd done just before we started the heel flap and then we finished with the pink yarn here, joined in the contrast yarn, and now to keep the stripes in sequence, we need to start again with the purple. And this is at the point where we cut the yarn, so we're all ready to join it back in again. I'm going to join it in up here, where I'm going to pick up the gusset stitches. So I am going to put my needle in to pick up the first stitch, and then just as we've done all the way through this, I'm going to start with the new colour and then I'm just going to pick up each stitch and knit it with the new purple colour but I'm also going to weave the end of this working pink yarn in as well. So I've got my two ends there, I'm going to bring them up and then pick up my stitch and knit it and then I'm going to take them back over the top pick up my stitch and knit it bring them up over the top again take them back down again so it's exactly the same process as we've done for picking up the new colour at the cuff and also at the heel 
and it will it will hold very firmly at the gusset. You don't need to worry about it coming undone and, and your sock unraveling from the middle. It will be absolutely fine. And once again, if you if you need to, you can leave a longer end and then sew the ends in if you feel you want to be more secure. And also if you do end up with the stitch looking a little bit loose here, you can just pull these ends and it'll pull the stitches tighter and that will hold it nice and firmly. When you're ready to join the yarn in for the different coloured toes, it's exactly the same process as we've done all the way along. So I'm going to join the yarn in here on the top of the foot. Um, I'm somebody who can feel every little lump and bump of my socks, but I can't feel the join if it's here at the top. If you do think that you might feel it on, on your foot, then you can always join it underneath where your toe um, jo joins onto your foot if you like and you've got that, that gap just underneath your big toe and if the join is there then you probably won't feel it at all. So just like before I'm going to just start knitting with, with the new yarn. So there's my first stitch. Now because we are decreasing for the toes then there's my slip slip knit. Here's my two yarns that I want to knit in. So I've pulled them up over the top and I make the slip slit knit stitch and then back over again and knit. And it's exactly the same as you've done all the way along. So you're bringing the two ends up and then down again. And that will weave the ends in for your toes nice and securely and you're just going to carry on knitting as you would do normally as you see I'm on my short circular so at some point I will either change to double points or magic loop and then I'll be able to continue doing the toes as the number of stitches gets smaller. If you're using a smaller short circular than mine this is a 30 centimeter one then you might well find that you can complete the toes without having to change but with a 30 centimeter circular you can't do that. And that's it. That's how you add all the different colours in um, as you're working down your socks so that you can have contrast cuffs, heels and toes.